My mom used to be a Catholic nun. Yeah? And I'm probably the first son of a nun you've ever seen before. <laughs> All right? Being a son of a nun, I was taught about the gift of service. I watch mom, who happens to be Haitian, serve any and everyone almost to a fault. She practically fed everybody. She gave people money, clothing, and even a place to stay. But I saw how it affected people, and I wanted to have that same effect on others as well. We lived in Miami, Florida, where I attended Catholic school from elementary to high school. I love school. <laughs> I was student body president, captain of the basketball team. Shoot, I was even captain of the drill team. <laughs> I really love serving people in my school and my community. Why? Because I'm a son of a nun. <laughs> and serving others was my gift. But once I left my neighborhood, none of that mattered because I was seen as a threat. Whenever I go into a supermarket and walk near women, they look at me and move their purse over to the shoulder furthest away from me. Whenever I cross the street at a crosswalk, people would lock their car doors as I passed. I really hated hearing that locking sound because every time they locked, it was like a stab into my heart because I truly loved everybody. When I'd walk down the street and approach an oncoming pedestrian, more often than not, they look at me and hurry across the street before they would pass me. They didn't know the real me. They only saw me. I was 12 years old. I remember going into a drugstore, and within minutes of walking in, the manager quickly looked at me and with a stern voice yelled, Get out! I gave him a confused look and asked, What? And with piercing eyes and that same stern voice again, he yelled, Get out! I left, angry, upset, and insulted. As I was walking away, I saw a black police officer. I was like, yeah. I hurried over to explain the injustice that I had just experienced, hoping that he would go back with me to set that manager straight. Well, to my dismay, he just looked at me and said, kid, just go home. What? I was in shock. I couldn't believe my ears. Had he accepted the prejudice that came with being black? and expecting me to do the same? Man, things like that happen so often that I actually believe that because I'm black, I am worth less. Despite being a son of a nun who was taught to love everybody and help whenever I could, still, I was conditioned by my environment and the way that I was treated that by having dark skin meant that I was lower class, less intelligent, and more likely to commit a crime. I actually believe that. So I graduated from high school in Miami, and traveled to the opposite side of the U.S. to attend college in Idaho. <laughs> I was actually excited to meet new people and try new things. And just like high school, I played basketball, worked on the gym, participated in service opportunities, and attended school dances. <laughs> I was having so much fun, I didn't realize what wasn't happening. Women weren't moving their purses to the other shoulder when I'd walk near them in the supermarket. People weren't locking their car door when I'd pass them the crosswalk. When I walked down the street and approached an oncoming pedestrian, more often than not, we'd stop and visit. They saw me and got to know me. Then a year later, a life-changing event happened. I remember having a great morning at church with my friends, and we were heading back to our apartment. And I got into the backseat of my buddy's car, and I looked in the rearview mirror and saw myself. And for the first time in a long time, I remembered I was black. <laughs> I had gotten so comfortable with my friends and living in this environment that for the first time in my life, I forgot I was black. I didn't feel like a threat. I just felt like me. And without that burden, I was able to be Patrick the person instead of Patrick the color. The more I thought about this experience, the more I realized how important it changed how I looked at myself and how I viewed other people. In fact, I call it the Christmas gift mentality. Let me explain. When I wake up on Christmas morning and run over to the Christmas tree to see what I got, do I really care about the color of the wrapping paper? No. Now, don't get me wrong. Wrapping paper is important. 
but not as important as the gift inside. That gift inside is what really matters. Well, I believe the same is true when interacting with people. Judging a person by the color of their wrapping is no different than deciding if you like a gift solely by the color of its wrapping. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? It's especially ridiculous if you're getting a white elephant gift. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's a gift wrapped with the most beautiful wrapping paper, but after you open it, you find something like a 1957 waffle iron that's been burning waffles since 1965. <laughs> How a person looks doesn't determine their true value or gift that they have to offer. We all have a strong desire to be understood. So taking the time to show genuine interest in providing some type of service, service opens the door to fulfilling that desire. This truth has also helped me to discover what my mom modeled for me over the years. The more you serve, the more you'll get what you deserve. Finding value in others and discovering their gift clearly shows our true race, the human race. Now, don't get me wrong. Your mom doesn't have to be a nun, and you don't have to live in Idaho or Miami to look past the wrapping paper and discover the gift inside each person you meet. Just take the time to, to know others, to get to know others, and look past your differences. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I'm living that dream. We can all live that dream. Like wrapping paper, skin color is important, but not as important as the gift inside. Thank you.